Welcome back. See episode two of Dawn in the Alley. What do you know? We're back again. I guess for some bloody reason. He may be the one that's back for some reason. We haven't heard. <laughs> Don't know. Anyways, as this usual. This episode. Food. Yes, especially food and drink. Virgin brandy. Yes. We got all the good stuff. Especially made by most of our products today. By Co-op Gold. We are not sponsoring them. Yeah. The only thing We're that's not, not sponsored is our main dish today. But anyways. But I must say, hmm, yeah, the brandy was always a shell of rice for his excellence. Mm, yes. mm. Yeah, cheers, mate. Cheers, indeed. Mm, yes. Anyways, as usual, the news. The past or present of Calgary, Alberta. So, the Calgary Stampede. Pretty nice place. Yes, it's coming up. there. It's coming up. It's uh, springtime. No, it's summertime. Nice. Yeah. Never mind. It's getting <laughs> anyway. warm out. That means get ready for the stampede. Even though it was actually September. Yeah. It went in 1912, so... So, uh... It actually started as a agriculture party thing in 1884. And they had a fair, and a quarter of the town showed up, actually. It was pretty nice. Yeah. And then they tried to move it somewhere else where it thrown away where it is, which was Elbow River. And man, was that a bad decision. They lost everything. And they stopped doing it until 1895. That's like seven years later. Yeah. Six or seven years later. And then yeah, they kind of got it back together slowly. They banded it together. And then this guy, literally, his name is Guy Wiedek. Guy Wiedek, an American trick roper, participated <laughs> in the Dominion what, Exhibition. What did you say, groper? <laughs> I was trying to say roper. Trick uh, roper. I've had too much to drink, my friend. Hi. Uh, cheers to that. I'm not actually drinking alcohol. This is... Version. Yeah. They saw what it was. Anyway. He, uh... He wanted to, uh... He returned to Calgary and wanted to... Looks like here it says he wants to... Ad advertise what the Wild West is. I guess. And so he put... $100,000... For funding the event, oh, he convinced his friends, some businessmen, to put $100,000, which is a lot of money then. And then also there was the big four people. Uh, Senator Patrick Burns, George Lane, A.J. McClain, and A.E. Cross. Mm-hmm. And just all that stuff. And they tried to get a rodeo around and had over 100,000 people attend. So yeah. $1 per person, I guess, they paid off. But also there was hundreds of cowboys from Western Canada, uh, United States, and Mexico. Yeah. Lots of, all over the world. Oh, well, uh, no, we didn't go in nobody North from America. Across the pond, so, anyway, they were promoting it, and then the big four said, "We're not interested." So he went across the country. Nobody wanted it, and then he came back. Oh, hold on, was there like, some businessmen in Winnipeg? <coughs> yes, convinced. Yeah, yeah. No, some people convinced him to come over there after it filled the big four. And then they... Well, the big four wasn't interested. They weren't interested, so these other businesses were like, Hey, come host it here. And then it totally failed. He's like, I'm not coming back here. And then they tried to hold the, New York and... Well, uh, same thing. <laughs> and then he returned to Calgary, and then he told the big four what happened. And they're like, oh, he poor soul. And they helped him, and it was amazing. And they called it the Great Victory Stampede in celebration of Canada and the soldiers returning from World War One. Oh, good, good, good. And then it was exceptionally successful after that. You know how that goes. Oh, it's even around today. It's known internationally, I, I believe. At it's least bloody expensive, that's what it is. Yes, but there's a lot than just a rodeo. There's midway games, uh, a bunch of activities. There's shopping and, of course, food. So let me get this straight. I paid money at the front gate to go pay more money. Yes, basically it's <sighs> rob. Even the rides you have to pay for there. I, it's like... Uh, the North American Entertainment uh, Group, whatever it's called. So, but... What a disgrace. Yeah. Is that it for the news, or...? That's it for the news. Okay. I'm done with the news. I'm frustrated now. <laughs> I don't want to go to the stampede. I'll be working. Same here. Oh, I got rid of the camera. Oh, we're back. Okay. I don't know if you missed us or not. <laughs> Anyways, to so the weather. In Calgary... In, well, in old... Uh, good Fort Calgary, Alberta. And not Fort... Brisbane, 
next episode maybe. Um, weather, uh, from the 15th of May all the way to the 21st of May. So, on Monday, it's going to be sh uh, showers with a chance of sun, 14 degrees as a high, two, 4 degrees as low, precipitation rate 60%, and it'll be a road 10 millimeters, so that's about, uh, about less than half an inch. And then Tuesday, just a bit of rain with some sun, high 11, low 5, precipitation rate uh, 40%, uh, no, wait, yes, um, then go me less than 1 millimeter. Wednesday. Ah, uh, some good brandy. Ah, uh, it is. Wednesday, uh, partly cloudy, high 14, low 4, 20%. Uh, and then Thursday, a uh, bit of rain, uh, high of 16, low of 3 degrees, uh, precipitation rate 60%, and then rain, poly boot, uh, yeah, boot, <laughs> uh, 1 to 3 millimeters rain Friday will be raining completely, it looks like. So watch out for the floods. Oop, did I say that all loud? Flood season. <laughs> um, high of 15, uh, low of 5, precipitation rate 40%, uh, about 1 millimeter. Sa Saturday, brah, sunny with some cloud patches, 15 degrees, highs are high, 4 degrees is low, 30% is precipitation rate. And Sunday, finally, sunshine. No clouds, looks like. High is 17, low of 5, and precipitation rate 10%. And that's it for the weather, and uh, this has been courtesy of the Weather Network. You know what I noticed? The camera has it bugged out. Finally, for once. We've recorded for six minutes straight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Before, it wouldn't even last, like, two seconds. And it would all glitch and make it look like a very bad VHS. We haven't even started filming yet. Although, I, I, I kind of miss the VHS effect. The VHS effect, you know, like, you're watching a really old video, right? And then tracking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, to the main episode. Taste test. Kind of. Yeah, we're not very good at this. Well, first time we're doing it, whatever. Well, we have Pillsbury Pizza Pocket. On ye, our left, your right, is the um, pepperoni and bacon. And then our right, your left is the limited edition poutine. So, and then generally supplied by Mrs. Court is a knife for us to do cross sections. Not um, on lobotomy. Darn. I was so looking forward to that. <laughs> I'll just cut these up. Yeah, we, we can do a cross section of each. Cross? Wait, you know, I mean, sh 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 sh. Oh. just one of each we can do. Just one of each will cross. Yeah, okay. I've only had one type of pizza pop before, and that's pizza. I don't know about him. He hasn't had the bacon one. I have. Have you? I've had both of those. those okay, well, this doesn't count for him. It's just me. The fat guy gets the taste test. Obviously, I'm the best at taste testing because I'm the fat guy. Don't die on your drink now. <laughs> Especially on um, virgin brownie. So we have a poutine now. <laughs> Ignore my cough. I think I'm sick, but I don't feel like it. Oh well, I've had worse. This is the poutine cross section. Doesn't look appetizing. So I'll put this on this side for me. And you know what we have against that one guy who wears a suit and does the news poorly and also does food reviews? Have seen in YouTube? There's two of us, and I'm not wearing a suit. You will be in the next episode, maybe. And then here's the pepperoni and bacon, which some of you might have had. Looks delicious, eh? Looks just like the pizza ones. So, let's have this one. Okay. Right. Think it. Think. Sink it. Sink it? Are you quoting someone? No, we should come up with something. Okay. You've already eaten it, haven't you? Only no section. Okay. No call. Um, What's your... Okay, new show. We've got to do our own stuff. But thank you, Red and Link, anyways. Um, Scarf it and barf it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, eventually we'll have the food so bad that we'll have to barf it. So, scarf it or barf it. Okay, scarf it or barf it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Very good. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I only got bread in that first bite. <laughs> I got a lot of bread. Hmm. Ah. Uh, wish you had made paper towels. That might have been a good idea. 
Oh well. Unfortunately, it's just us. There's no crew. <laughs> Not professional. Not at all. Um, it's a little spicy. Other than that, it tastes like what's on the package. Oh, pepperoni. It tastes like a Lunchable. Oh, mm, yeah. Go uh, Schneider's hit it? Or who makes it? It's been a long time, as you can see. Oh, hot. Mm. I'll come back to this. <clears throat> so, what do you think of that? <clears throat> I like it. I'll probably have it again. With a tall glass of milk. <laughs> Are you going to dunk it? Dunk it? Oh no. <laughs> to wash down the spice. Oh yeah. Okay. And ready for the poutine? Ah, it looks like sloppy joes. It, it looks like... Actually no, it looks like some kind of gelatin there. Yeah. I don't know man. Right. Oh, hold on. Oh, a scarf it or yeah. barf it. Okay, scarf it and barf it. Scarf it or barf it. Scarf it, yeah. That sounds terrible. The whole world will <laughs> No. In time. A duck and a fly. We don't show this to Josie. We don't show this to Josie. Do you, do you want me to take it home? Yes, she won't eat anything for the rest of her days if she finds out this exists. I swear. Hopefully she doesn't see our videos. <laughs> she won't see this episode. If you're watching though, Josie, how did you find this video? That's what I want. <laughs> I've never seen the first episode. I don't know, I saw I had at least five views. Making profit. Yep. So, as you can tell, you know, uh, potato bite, uh, well, pieces in here, gravy, but also with the gravy, I believe they actually put the cream and cheese sauce in it too. Since I don't believe there's any cheese curds, but by definition, a good Canadian gravy, uh, poutine is with good french fries, a good, not too thick, not too runny gravy, and Quebec mozzarella cheese goods. Yeah, that'd be. Like the ones at um, uh, KFC. Exactly. Not McDonald's. Yeah, there's... Okay. Um, so last week we did nothing. Oh! Oh, oh no. He's too tipsy. <laughs> <I'm a> little... <laughs> uh, <laughs> just ignore that. <laughs> So last week we did nothing. This week we had food and virgin alcohol. <laughs> Next week oh, we should do um, crisps too. Yeah, we should do something physical. You found that out. Hurdles. No, thank you. I had enough of that. I got cut by one. Oh no. In grade six, went deep. <laughs> that, 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 How do you get cut by a hurdle? They said it too high, and these were the old ones. Metal. Yeah. Oh. And these were the ones that had a little hole on it, and went out of the actual bar. Get the hose, and it went. It was too high. Got me. Ouch. It was that deep. That's no good. It healed. All right. So. So what do you think? I like it. It's like pizza. Well, it's a beer pizza. Poutine. Uh, it's like if you put poutine on a pizza and folded the pizza over itself. Cool. Okay, well, I, th I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, I'm out of gin and, and juice. There's always more. Uh, I think we're going to go get drunk, so goodbye. Did it,